bounties. This is my best one. It's good. side I blew out but I'm not so worried about it because it's the back side. I'm not worried about it at all because it's the back side so that's why I didn't even bother to clamp. And I debated drilling this one out but it was already it had a had the same issue you know hadn't drill hole through it through it drill holes through it which is why I was pulling it out in the first place. That's the whole purpose of all this. You'll see. Two. Oh, I missed all the good stuff, damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, I have no idea how, I mean, the picture looks clear. So hopefully the lens is pretty clean. Have I got some stories to tell? Just gotta shut that real quick and uh, get to it. So, if it's not one thing, it's another. As most of you know, just when you think you're gonna get your head, you know, or rather more than your head above water, somebody comes and steps on it and pushes you right back down. Somebody being karma or fate or life or just the way things go. So, pretty sure there's some video previous to this that I've talked about my electrical issues. And, uh, and then we had a, a panel explode, a circuit, a breaker explode inside the panel. And uh, so we had to have a whole panel replacement. And I took the opportunity and spent an extra $600 to get the uh, electric company out here. This is just old phone line that I've got to cut down. To get the electric company out here to take down the overhead line that was there and bury that sucker underground which have un you have undoubtedly seen some footage of and i don't have a big wire going from there to there and so now i can go ahead and replace my soffit and my fascia at my convenience because this was only 534 dollars 536 or something so the trench that the electric company bid not too bad the box and the installation that we had the people you know the electric not the electric power company but the electric you know fixture company, whatever, you know, the electrician, uh, $2,500 fucking dollars, $2,500 for a new panel with a meter hookup and, you know, rewiring it, not rewiring it, not rewiring it, just taking the wire, just taking the old panel off the box, off the wall, wires off, box off, putting the new wires in this one, 2,500 bucks. Friggin' awesome. And we're supposed to be going on vacation. I don't want to put my dog back in doggy jail. I'm like, well, I'll build, I'll build a kennel. So I was going to go check out my options because they have those pre-made ones that you can buy, like Tractor Supply. 
and there's a tractor supply right by Home Depot, so I was going to go run some run some numbers and, and see which one I wanted to do, and then come back and build build a dog a dog kennel. See, here's all the stuff that here's the wire. Some of the wires that were this is the ones that was hanging on my house, and then coming down to the box, the wires that were going all across the way they took with them. Uh, that's my old box, my old box, my old uh, meter panel. Uh, yeah, freaking grounding rod that. All copper, 100% copper, big ass. What's left of a grounding rod? It's eight foot of it in the ground. They cut off the rest. So it's gonna get started in doing that. So I loaded up the trailer and I took off to town where they were supposed to have it. And then I got there and they're like, "Yeah, we don't have any of those." I'm like, "What about these?" They're like, "Yeah, those are just display models. They're all messed up. You can't have those because they're not for sale." And I'm like, "Well, your website totally said you had them in stock." She's like, "Okay, I'll let them know." So then I call another place and I'm like, "Hey, just checking to see if you had this in stock." Because, uh, you know, I'm at one store right now, and the website says that y'all have men, and and uh, and there's none here. So, you know, I'm calling y'all before I drive all the way there make sure y'all have them. And she's like, yeah, we don't control that. And I'm like, I understand you don't control that. That doesn't stop me from being pissed off as a customer. After looking on your website, being assured that when a store has them, I go there and you don't have them. Obviously, it's not your fault. I'm not taking it out on you. I'm simply expressing my frustration and explaining as to why I'm calling you. So they did have them, and there's a Home Depot beside that, so I was going to be able to go that way and check out the prices of the pins. They had a couple varieties, and my build solution at Home Depot. And then on the way, we had a little surprise. We had a little surprise, we did. I looked left, and it was all good. I looked right, and it was all good. And I looked left again, and it was still all good, except apparently it wasn't still all good. Because apparently I totally freaking uh, missed the car that was coming on my left hand side. And he was pissed. I get out and I'm like, oh, is everybody okay? He's like, you're a fucking dumbass. I'm like, okay, dude, I apologize. Uh, you know, what? I didn't even say that. When I first got out, I said I apologized. That was the first thing I did was apologize when I got out. I was like, oh my God. I am so sorry, guys. Is everybody okay? You're a fucking dumbass! Okay, is everybody okay? Fuck you! Alright, dude. I said I apologize. You're a fucking dumbass! Okay, dude. Alright. Ma'am, are you okay? You're a fucking dumbass! Not from her. This is him again. She's trying to get him to calm down. And, uh, and she's like, I think I'm okay. And then he's like, no, we're injured. We're both injured. And I'm like, yeah. You don't seem too injured. You're walking around. You're flailing. You're fucking drinking your beverage like you don't seem too injured you just seem pissed off don't come near me no, i ain't coming near you dude just fuck off i didn't say that but I'm like, I'm like you're fine bro like again i apologize i'm sorry fuck you okay whatever so then they immediately start calling the fucking ambulances and the fire trucks and shit to report their injury that is definitely not existent and i don't know it could be on her side um whatever they just seem like some fucking scammers to me so anyway, they were they were in a little hatchback though, so they probably got they probably got hit pretty good because you see how much damage is done to mine. But uh, I was gonna rent a car for my trip, and then I was like, well, we're bringing our son with us and his girlfriend, and I'm not sure if a full size vehicle is gonna be big enough to carry us all because they're not as big as they used to be. Well, let me check in the price for renting a big SUV. Well, that's fourteen hundred dollars as opposed to the four hundred that it was gonna cost for the full size full size uh, sedan. So I'm like, well, fuck that. And I'm like, well, maybe they can drive the S10 if there's not enough room, which they'd probably like better anyway, because, you know, then they wouldn't be trapped with us. And, you know, it would use less gas than my son's big old truck, and it's probably more reliable. And then I started thinking, on this trip, when I was driving, I was like, you know what, maybe I won't rent a car at all, because I haven't paid for it yet or anything. You don't have to pay for it if you don't pick it up. And uh, maybe we'll just take the Suburban, because there's plenty of room in the Suburban, and, the, you know, plenty of room for the luggage, plenty of room for all the people. And, uh, well, that's clearly not going to fucking happen. I have till four o'clock today to cancel the trip and get my money refunded. My wife's sleeping. And I doubt that she'd be too happy with canceling her vacation trip because we gotta buy a new car. I love that I just spent $1,000 on this at the shop getting a couple things repaired over the last couple months. And I love that the tires are basically brand fucking new, except for this one, which is had half the tread gouged away from me having to run it with all this metal locked against it because I had to get it out of the roadway. I was trying to pry the metal away so I wouldn't fuck up the tire and I just completely 
put a giant gouge in my thumb that I probably need stitches for, but I'm not going to go get them. She bled for about three hours. I finally got her, when I got her home, I got her wrapped up tight enough where she stopped bleeding apparently. But uh, had to wait two hours for the, two and a half hours for the tow truck. Had to call my son because I had the trailer on the back. So I had to call my son to come meet me to get the trailer. And then, you know, because of COVID, you're not supposed to ride with the tow truck drivers. And so I had to ride home with them. <coughs> Both airbags did go off. I was always surprised. I mean, I was always surprised. I always wondered whether or not these airbags would go off either randomly or if I was in an accident. I cut this one away so I could steer the wheel and uh, threw it in the back. I've got all sorts of little tiny. So there's one, there's one, there's one. I've got all these little tiny cuts on my hand. I don't know what the, I don't know if it's from, I think it's from this plastic exploding. You know and just like little bits of plastic like getting me in my in my thumb or something but yeah i never even saw a dude at fucking all didn't see him at all it just happened that's it i looked it was clear i went and it wasn't and they're like so and so then when the cop gets there and i tell him everything i just told y'all you know he's like where are you he's like pulling out of the gas station right there and, uh, you know, left, right, left, seemed clear. Apparently it wasn't. I didn't see him. He's like, were you distracted? I was like, no, I wasn't distracted at all. Matter of fact, when I was on the big highway 10 minutes ago, I was distracted by a rock song that was on, and I was rocking out, and, I, and, a, and a highway patrol passed me or a cop or something, and they gave me the blue light flash. I was like, oh, and I looked down, and sure enough, I was speeding by like five miles an hour over. And so I, I was on my P's and Q's. I slowed it down, and I was like, yep, you, you're lucky, bud. You got away with one. So, uh, so don't let there be another one be a good boy so i was being a good boy and then they're doing all this construction on this road so they're trying to expand it from a four-way to a or four lane to a six lane and so there's all these barrels on both sides of the road i don't know if i just was distracted by all the barrels and that's why i didn't see the little hatchback of course that's why you always should drive with your headlights on they weren't so you know a little gray hatchback you know not much bigger than the barrels that were blocking you know i don't know it was it was destined to fucking he was destined to get in a wreck today like my 16 year old son was supposed to take his driver's test in this today like, well that ain't gonna happen is it bud that ain't gonna happen and he was so mad he's like, i drove all over the country searched for months to find this particular blah 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 whatever it was i don't know what it was version of the blah 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 i'm like well hope you didn't pay too much for it because uh you're gonna get blue book value fuck <laughs> you're gonna get blue book value and not a penny more so i hope you didn't overpay for that piece of shit hatchback you know, that's why I have liability on the, on the, on the Suburban and that's it. Cause you know, I could have full coverage on that fucker and they'd pay out $1,500. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause that's what the Blue Book value is. I easily, yeah, I pay more than, I pay $1,500. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've probably paid twice that in insurance on that car over the years, but still, if I was paying full coverage, it'd be a lot more. So I would have definitely have probably paid that in a year, every year that I had full coverage. And so I've got a yeah, I can wreck it once and get one year's worth of payments back if I'm lucky. So yeah, stupid to have full coverage. But yeah, so now we got one piece of shit 2008 that's been T-boned and put back together. And one piece of shit 2002 that's uh, also seen better days. So the next investment is supposed to be the storm shelter, which is $6,000. So really, we can't afford a car. Car prices are extra high right now anyway because that circuit chip thing. Probably a year or two before we get a car. It's a good thing I don't have a job or anywhere to be, I guess. And uh, I guess if I'm going on motorcycle rides, I'll be driving this fucking uncomfortable bitch. I guess I'll be pulling out one of the. I guess I'll be pulling out the suburban seat and replacing it. Replacing this with a suburban seat. And then I have to cut a hole in the roof for my head to stick through, and then put a little plexi plexiglass bubble riveted down into the into the into the into the. Uh, into the body here and then I can drive my little bubble truck around town with my comfortable seat see how long I get see how long I get to do that before I get pulled over and taken to the big house but that's my adventure for today so you're welcome for that congratulations look at what my done my damn rich insurance man done bought for himself to mow the fucking lawn some sort of front mowing device oh my goodness how you nice to have all the money in the world accident yesterday right the big accident sometime in 
the early 2000s, I've been unable to turn my head very far to the right. You know, and I always pop my neck. I just popped it, so I can't now. And I haven't been able to pop it to the right for all that time. So whatever happened in my accident yesterday with my whiplash, I can now totally turn my head to the right. I mean, everything hurts because I'm, you know, I'm suffering whiplash, you know, the infection whiplash. But I can totally turn my head to the right, unlike I've ever been able to before, what, in the last, you know, several years anyway, like I say. And I can totally pop it to the right now. Not like I used to be able to, but I can get a snap or two, which is friggin' awesome. Like, I can't tell you, like, how awesome. So, yeah, apparently all I need to do was a good, getting a good fucking head-to-head -head smack to put everything back into alignment. I mean, I might have could have gone to the chiropractor, but fuck it. I guess some head-ons will work, too. I apologize. That's your update, update. Oh my goodness, I got my new riding boots in. Y'all hadn't even seen them. I should be out riding, but instead I gotta build this freaking dog kennel. So we'll do that instead. But man oh man, I really ought to be riding. But this is gonna be a fun experience and we'll see how this, see how this paddle drill works. See how this paddle drill works with my, uh, with my hole digging process. God damn it. yet so I don't know when you stopped watching I don't know when the battery died uh, my boards run even because it's coming downhill I mean I could have done it like I did the other one just did them all even all the way across and then stuck in cut boards at an angle to fill in the bottom pieces but I had I'm just I'm throwing this together real quick because I'm doing it way too late so I just got to put in one more post which I started digging out over there and uh, build a gate some sort of clasping agent to get the gate to close and then gonna need a uh, probably gonna need some staples to put in this page wire and hopefully I have enough page wire yeah just so uh, just so you're aware I opted for the leap because I have these these are my knee and my ankle pads and I'm, I'm enjoying those and this is you know my big my armor for my chest and my back and my shoulders and my and my elbows and 
I'm enjoying that. It seems to be pretty good quality. I was unsure of it at first, but it seems to be working out. So that's kind of one of the main reasons I opted for the Elite boots. I mean, I also read reviews and stuff, but yeah, let's check them out. Okay, obviously this is first impression, but I mean, just putting my foot in it, it feels a thousand times better than my Fox or Fly, I think I got a Fly. I think it's Fly Racing. Yeah, it already feels a million times better. I mean, I gotta spend some time in it and ride with it and break it in. But considering it's not broken in at all, yeah, I'm a, I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with this. Yep, I am pretty happy with these. I mean, yeah, just sitting in them. Like, as soon as I get these on, they hurt. Yes, I have packaging on the floor for my three things that I've gotten that I haven't thrown away yet. Because I'm a hoarder when it comes to packaging. The big reveal. I didn't buy enough wood, so I threw the page wire up. And then I was worried about him digging underneath or somehow manipulating the page wire enough that he could get through the giant gaps in the wood. Because he's a bad boy. So I threw the sheet metal up, randomly, along the bottom to prevent him from doing that. And I mean, I had been planning on doing all this for like two months and then I just never did it until like I started three days before we were supposed to leave, because <laughs> I'm an idiot. So uh, not enough room for him to get out there unless he digs out a hole super, I mean he's a digger, but I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll dig his way out. Um, I'm going to leave his collar on just in case he does and hopefully he'll stay in the yard. Of course, if he digs his way out, he's going to dig his way in because that's where his, this is where his food and water is going to be. And I just hung this tarp and there's a 50% chance of rain every day that we're going to be gone. I put a couple holes in it for drainage. I'm going to put his house over here. I was thinking about in the corner, but it might be too close to get wet, but I was thinking that'd be good because then he could see Lucky and Lucky could see him. Yeah, Lucky's going to be in this one. Uh, but I don't know. So anyway, this is what I did for the meantime. This is a giant door sitting on the ground. And a door, barrier, entryway. But I'm probably going to have to redo most of this is the main point. So, But it's like, it's basically about $230 worth of wood. And uh, it's not too bad because three or four months ago this would have been you know, about a thousand bucks worth of wood. Which is why I was going to buy metal dog cages like from, that are way smaller. I was about to spend like $2,000 on two cages to put together, well, 1400 bucks on two 10 by 10 cages, um, which would have ended up about the same size. This is a little bit, this is closer to 1515 than 2020, but, but yeah, and that would have, uh, and that would have, uh, been 1400 plus tax, but then I realized that wood is w way cheaper now. It's not crazy expensive like it was, so hopefully he'll be good in here for a week. What are you doing? You done got yourself trapped in there. You can't get through there. Oh my goodness. You are crazy. What are you doing? Meow. Well, Meow. Well. Well, what are you doing, kitty kitties? Okay, that's your update update.